Hello everyone, welcome to the first video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint some Warrior Suns for a Song of Ice and Fire. The Warrior Suns can be used for the Lannister forces and are described as wearing cloaks of the Seven, which is essentially a rainbow. And I wanted to, sh to show how to do it quite simply. Um, I didn't want it to be too bold, so I wanted it to be more subtle. Uh, it can be quite complicated, but I think I found an easy way, so let's try and get straight into the video. I start off by painting the eyes. Um, I think it's pretty good to show you how to do it without making it too complicated. I'm not too neat with this stage, as you can see. I do think it is good to paint the eyes first, because you can paint the skin tone and not mess up the eyes after you've already done the skin. So I do neaten up the eyes in between these stages with a bit of black um, and come straight in with the skin tone. It's a base colour, it's kind of a reddish tone. Um, the majority of people will have this kind of skin colour. I'm not going to be showing you all of the paints that I use because I just think that everyone has their own. But you can obviously substitute in the colours that you do have for the ones that look similar to mine. You can see me painting above the brow um, above the eyes, just being careful not to actually get any paint on the thing that I've already painted. So try to be careful. Um, you don't have to be neat with anything because obviously you've not painted anything else yet. So once that's done, I come in with my second colour for the skin tone. It's essentially uh, a bit of ivory mixed in or white. Um, these colours that I'm using are pre mixed from Foundry. Um, and again, I'm just being careful not to get any on the eyes and I'm leaving some of the recesses to start off shading the skin so use the nose, the cheeks, the lips, anything like that um, and a bit of the brow. Uh, later on in, in the later stages I don't highlight the brow as much because the shading makes it a lot more realistic for the tone. So this is the third skin tone that I'm using. Um, each of the clips are, are happening pretty quickly at the moment so I'm trying to focus mostly on the cheeks, lips and uh, the nose. Just be careful not to put too much paint on, on these stages because you don't want to go over any of the shading that you've made by using a lighter colour. Be careful when you paint the lips and stuff like that. Just go slowly. Don't take too. Don't rush it. You don't need to rush anything you're doing. So now, once that's done, I wash the skin. I'm being careful not to just slop it on anywhere. I'm choosing where I want it to go, and I'm not doing it over the eyeballs. You don't want the eyes to look you know, like a skin tone colour, you want them to stay white, um, but you want it to, to go into the recess. Now this is this is good because it mixes together all of the tones that you've already done. Once that's finally dry, you can come in with the third highlight now. Now you can not do this if you want to, if you think that's an uh, acceptable tone, then you can stop from this stage and then go into the next stage if you like. But if I feel like Painting the face to a nicer level, to you know, highlighting it a bit more than you normally would, draws the attention to the face, which is quite nice. So essentially, it's the same colour as I used before the wash. Again, we've, we've mixed in white or ivory. These are pre-painted colours that I'm using. I'm turning the figure to make it easier for me to paint the lines of the lip, the, the and the, uh, the chin. So do whatever makes it easier for you to paint. Remember, this is all personal preference for the, the colour that you want to go with for the skin. So do it how you like. This is just how I'm doing it on my models for the army. Now we're getting to the final stages of the skin. Going quite bright now. This is nearly white or ivory. And I start to put in the nostrils. I, this is just a nice little thing. If you can do it then it's nice. If you, if you can't, don't worry about it. It's just something that I do. 
I think it just adds a little bit of extra detail that's not sculpted on the actual figure. Um, and I'm just doing dots now on the cheeks the, and the uh, nose and the, the chin. Again, only a little bit of paint and slowly. If you struggle with a bit of detail, you can hold your breath and push your hands together to, to get a bit more control on the model. And this is the final tone now. So the smallest amount of paint, I drag off because there was even too much on that brush there. And it's just dotting the tip of the nose, the nostrils, and the cheeks. You can see that even though this is the last highlight and this is where I put on the least amount of paint, I'm taking longer on than I did on the other stages. That's because this is an important stage. You don't want to get too much over the shading that you've already done. Now that the skin is done, we can move on to the fun part, which is the cloak. Now I'm showing here where you should put paint, um, the parts of the recesses of the cloak are here, the cloak is here, um, but that part is actually metal, so just be careful that you actually paint that part right, um, and don't forget to do the cloth at the front. So I come in with the dark green, now most people will have this kind of base colour, it's not a special colour, it's just a generic dark green, and I've watered it down pretty heavily. You can see the brush that I'm using is not Nothing special, it's actually a really old brush. So you don't have to have any specialist brushes or something like that. Um, so come in, and this is all personal preference, but I'm putting in darker tones in the parts of the cloak um, because I just think that that works better. I wanna have lighter parts on the edges and darker parts on the um, creases. So I come in with green. Uh, this part's all pretty quick, um, I use all the colors of the rainbow um, and mix them in whilst they're painting so you don't have to have weird colors just bold colors you can see how I'm using the purple now to kind of blend in with the green that I'm already using remember these paints need to be pretty wet this is essentially wet blending um, on, a, on a bigger scale you don't normally do this much at a time but I think this works this technique works pretty well for this cloak so I'm blending in the colors, keeping the brush wet, not, not soaked, but enough so that the colors blend in quite nicely and move on to each different color really quickly. You can see how I'm painting the lines as straight as possible. Obviously you can't really paint perfectly straight lines, um, but keeping them straight means that you can blend in color next to the paint that you've already used. And you don't want to be blending these colors too much because they'll just mix into one weird color. You don't want that. You want to be able to see the different colors of the rainbow. Um, you see how I'm coming in with red now on the, on the parts that are, are slightly more highlighted. So remember to paint following the lines of the cloth as best as possible, the darker tones in the recesses, the lighter tones on the edges. Now I'm not using oranges and yellows as much as the other colors at this moment in time because they just overpower everything. So I'm going really, really light with this orange right now. You can see where I've kind of done it a bit too much. So I come in with a clean brush and start blending it in with the color that I've already done. Now you don't want to blend this too much. Um, it just mixes all into one color. Um, and because this is essentially a base cut, you want to see all the different colors that you're using. Try to cover the black as much as possible. You don't want to have black anywhere, really. You can see where I'm putting in the yellow now, trying to cover up that orange a little bit. And I'm not overpowering any of the other colors. These should all work together, you know, complement each other. You can see how I go over parts that are a bit too, too bright and take it off. 
to make sure, like I say, make sure the edges are done, make sure there's as little black as possible. You don't want any black at all, really. And you can see how you look at it in a different light and they kind of, they all blend in, which is a really nice start to the cloak. Again, here, doing the littlest amount of the lightest colors and they, they work really nice. So once the cloak part's done, you can move on to the front cloth. This is the same thing. This is just a smaller surface area, so you want to have less color, you know, dominating and just more vibrancy. I'm just stippling on paint here. Remember, make it wet, but not so that it's just ridiculously watery, kind of like a milk consistency, really. And it's best to work pretty quick so that all the colors mix in together without making the paint thick where you've broken the drying layers. So again, as the cloak, make sure you use as many of the colors as possible. Don't go too bright with yellows or oranges at this stage. You can come in with them at the next stage. You can see how I just put the littlest amount on and blend them into the, to the stage that I've already done. Once it's reasonably dry, you can see there's a bit of wet there still. Um, you can see how all of the colors are blending in really, really nicely. Now, at some points, this might not be a nice blend. Um, but you can have a look and see if you want to add different color and, and leave some color as it is. So where there's too much of one color in a certain place, I come in with a tone that complements the color that's underneath it. So in this case, purple, um, I put a bit of red on. I think that, that works really, really nicely. The consistency of the paint at this stage is still the same, but I've come in now with a, a much, much neater brush, much tidier brush, you can see that the point is really nice on this. So I can put the paint exactly where I want it. Now, when I put a line on and it's a bit too overpowering, um, you can clean the brush or I clean the brush and drag out the color into the colors that are underneath it. So it kind of blends in nice. Notice how I'm obviously doing the edges with the same tone that I started off with. Uh, in between, I do mix the colors with the basic, you know, blue, red, green that I've got on my palette already. And I do mi mix in between the cloth and the cloak. It's best to do this so that you don't keep on going backwards and forwards with the colors. But here I do, I do do that. So it's just best to do one color at a time. Uh, at the moment, I'm just blending in two colors um, you can see that kind of greenish tone I've got there um, again just introducing a new line of color and see how I'm making that line a bit more prominent by just going over it multiple times um, if I've got too paint too much paint on my brush I just drag it off you can see there I'm feathering out the paint there because I put a bit too much on um, to blend it in between the colors underneath. And again, I just re-highlight the line that I want to show. Now the edges of the cloak at the top are, are nice to show a variety of colors on. Um, obviously these parts would be, would be brighter, so you can put any color that you want on there. Now that those colors are basically done, I can come in with the much brighter colors now, like the orange here, uh, I think because that line's pretty prominent, having a light color like that works really nicely. Um, but I don't want to put too much orange on, so I go to a different tone and introduce it somewhere where it was just a bit lacking. So this blue works really nicely. You can see the under under color there; it's a bit purplish. So using a color that complements that color, like a purple or a red or something like that, would work really nice in that area. So when you are mixing in colors yourself and highlighting the cloak try to use colors that complement each other instead of having colors that work against each other now you can redefine color um, by just using the base color that you used in the first part of the base coat for the cloak now this is essentially just you know not not going too thick with the paint just going over it with a green or you know green on green or red on red wherever you wherever you did you can see how where our paint 
and finish a layer, I, I, I move it in the lighter to see how it looks. Now, you want to be constantly doing this to make sure that no colours are overpowering in comparison to to a colour that's next to it or something like that. Um, and you can add a different colour in to, to break up that prominence from one certain colour. Again, don't forget to do the edges of the cloak. You don't want them to look black. They would have light catching on them. So I do use slightly lighter colours. Uh, I'm coming in with the yellow now. I've not used that too much, but when you've got a little bit on your brush, um, you can you know see see how I'm just feathering out the colour into the into the other colours that I've used, and where that that looked a bit too much, so I just dry the brush a little bit, not too dry, but it's not got any colour on, and then I just drag it out into the colour underneath, feathering it out so that all the colours blend nicely in together. You see now it's not too prominent. So I'll put a little bit more on. Make it as straight as possible. You want the lines to be nice and straight or as straight as possible to, to fit the the slope of the cloth. Uh, I'll move on to the front bit of the cloak. This is the final part. Again with lighter colours. Now you can use one main colour to pick out the detailing on the star if you want. But I just wanted to make sure that the, the cloak and the front loin cloth or whatever you want to call it looked... The same, you know, one didn't look out of place compared to the other. So I come back around on the back of the cloak, highlighting in places where I think it needs a bit more colour. Here I'm just using a bit of blue. I'm not going too crazy with it. See how much, see how little paint there is on the brush. Um, this is this is important, I think. Not putting too much paint on to overpower anything that you've done beforehand, and as well as that. Less is more with the with the painting, you know, with with pigment and paint on the brush. It's better to put less on and then build up layers instead of just putting one thick coat on or anything like that. Now that the cloth and cloak is done, we can move on to the biggest part of a model, which is the armor. So I come in with a metal tone from Foundry. This is just a silver. But most of you will have your own colours that you use for this kind of thing like painting metal or gold or anything like that so use that use that base tone that you'd use and start painting the armour with that so it's watered down a similar consistency to the colours that I was using on the cloak maybe a little bit thicker I mean metal has a, a bigger pigment in anyway so it has better coverage and over the male parts I'm not dry brushing or anything like that I'm just kind of over brushing which is essentially just a wetter version of dry brushing you don't have to worry too much about getting it into the recesses because we're going to be putting on a wash later on so I do paint one part of this at a time now the reason for that is because you don't want to be doing loads of parts of a model and then going back to something that's not fully complete because it just breaks the layer of paint that will be that should be drying and makes a, a thick surface. You want it to be smooth, really. So, as you can see, I'll, I'll start with one part of the leg and then I'll move on to the next part of the leg and, and complete you that before moving on to the, the chest plate or anything like that. Now, some of you may have sprayed the model with a silver because the armor is, is one of the biggest parts of this model now you can do that that's that's fine I did it black because black is a nice undercoat for armor anyway but I didn't want the cloak to be too bright or shiny looking or anything like that you know, metallic looking so I used black any of you that used silver it might be an easy stage for you because obviously you don't need to you don't need to base coat it so you can just move on to the next step um, and just ignore this part which is nice so when the model does get to parts where it's a bit awkward to to paint don't be afraid to turn the model don't turn your brush hand your brush hand naturally goes how you want it to so as you can see here I turn the model and keep my brush hand in the same angle that it was anyway so always make the figure easier for you to paint 
by turning the model, not your hand. You don't, you know, you don't want to break your hand by moving your, moving it at a weird angle. Now there, I did, I wasn't super careful. I did get a bit on the cloak, but it's an easy, it's an easy fix. Just dry your brush quickly. I did lick my brush there. I know a lot of you probably do the same, but if you don't lick your brush, um, properly dry it before you do put your brush on to clean it because otherwise all of the metal colour that you're still wet will just all blend in and, and turn into one big blob and make everything metallic. So finally the legs are done and I move on to the breastplate. Again, being careful not to get it on anything else and moving the brush pretty quickly, getting it into all the little nooks and crannies. You don't want anything to look really black underneath this. This is important to get a nice base coat on. So around the neck I'm being careful. Because I neatened up the face and the helmet uh, after the stage of me doing the skin tone, I can see exactly where I want the, the paint to be. Now, if you didn't do that stage, you don't have to worry. Um, you just have to be a bit more careful um, and, and look a bit more carefully to see exactly where the paint needs to go. So this is a pretty repetitive process. Um, Remember, if you break each part down, you know, leg, leg, arm, arm, and chest, um, it makes it a lot easier, and you can complete it at, at all at once so that it doesn't get tedious to paint, really. Between each stage, I do check to make sure that I've completely covered the parts that I want to. Now, I did say that you don't need to see too much black but if you do leave slight slight bits of black in that's fine because met metallic colors especially true metallic metals they they do have a natural sheen to them and we are going to be putting on a black wash anyway so you can leave a bit of black on in certain areas and it just adds a bit you know a different bit of texture or, or light to to the model which is quite nice again here i'm being careful not to to paint on a cloak so when i do paint near a color that i've already painted I just slow my brush down, as you can see, put on the brush, put the brush on the surface, and then slowly move it to avoid the color that you've already painted. Now these big flat surfaces are really nice because you can just paint the edges and then fill in the gaps in between. I've quite enjoyed doing that, that part because obviously it's really not quick and easy, and you can start to see now how nice the model looks with the armour on. You can see how that, that cloak works really well with the metallic tone. Now I do also have pretty big gaps in commentary on this part because it's just a repetitive process. I don't really want to keep on saying the same thing. But see how I'm holding the model I'm trying not to touch parts that I've already painted. Now this is because the, if you hold a part of the model that's already got paint on and you're, and you're happy with it and you touch it too hard, then what happens is the paint will rub off and it'll make a thick surface. You know, It won't be a smooth surface. So be careful when you're touching parts of the model that's already been painted. Now you can varnish these layers in between. Just be careful with that. Um, you don't want to put too much varnish on the whole model because you can lose a bit of detail or some parts just don't look right in comparison to others. Now, I go over every part again that I've already done just to make sure that it's all properly filled in or to a level that I'm happy with. And I come in on the helmet. Oh yeah, just, you know, I, I told you earlier not to forget that part, I nearly did. But, um, that's why you should always check the parts that you need to do. So a nice little tip for painting the helmet is to do the edges or you know the perimeter of the helmet first. I can see where I do the first line and then I place my finger on the top of the helmet to then paint around the edge. Now, obviously I'm not touching any parts that I've already painted, which I was talking about earlier, and I can just swivel the model around on that point. 
Um, it's a nice little tip. And a lot of you probably do use it, but it's just the best way to not touch any parts that have already been painted. Now, once you do all of the edges, you can just fill in the part, you know, the, the main part of the helmet. Essentially, you just paint it in between lines and um, it just makes it a lot easier. You can see I twist it around, make sure that everything else is done. I touch the sword to make sure I'm not touching any part of the model that's been painted already. Obviously, the metal's still drying, so you don't want to be touching that. Um, and just fill in the helmet nice and easy. Now, you notice I'm not painting the sword now. Just as I mentioned, I don't want to be touching it whilst I'm painting. So I'll leave the sword for a later stage and just do silver parts of the armor first. Now the armor is base coated. We can move on to the leather. Now this is just the belt. Now you could paint the belt and the sword handle brown or you can do the belt black and the sword handle brown. You can do it however you like. I'm just using this brown because I've got it on the rest of my army. It's just a dark brown. Um, I'm being careful not to get on too much of the armor, but there is a belt buckle on there. Now, you don't need to worry about that, and that's why you do the brown first. The buckle is over the top of the the lever, so it's best to paint underneath you know the, the surface underneath and then paint on top so the silver or the gold that you're going to be using for the belt buckle be careful not to to get it on the other surfaces again you know, I, i'm slowly painting in parts where you know paint has already been done parts have already been painted on me and that's essentially the, the color for that So that was a nice quick stage and we can move on to the gold parts now this is the last stage before we do a wash so i do choose to do the belt buckle gold now that that's just because it breaks up the silver on the model you can do it silver if you like that's fine again because the lever underneath has already been painted you want to be careful now turn the model to make it easier for you to just do up and down brush strokes. I find, I personally find it a lot easier to do that. Some of you may find it easier to do sideways strokes, do it how you like, but if you do struggle to do straight lines, turn it so that the surface that you're painting is just a simple up and down brush stroke motion. And with the same gold, I do the hilt and the, the you know, the guard of the sword, turning it so that it's easier for me to paint, remember. With the actual guard of the sword I'm, I'm quite careful now you can get on a blade if you want to it doesn't matter obviously you're not painted it which is another reason why painting the blade last is just a nice thing to do be careful not to get it too much on the the uh, silver arm that you've already done because this isn't highlighted you don't really have to worry too much about getting it on but the best the best way to get better at painting is just to try and be neat on stages that you as or as many stages as possible really yeah, make sure you get the whole the whole surface. Now once that's done, we want the model to be properly dry before moving on to the next stage. If you start washing metallics before they're properly dry, the wash just messes up and it's just it's just a mistake so make sure it's properly dry leave it for 10 20 minutes really if you're painting multiple models you know there's 12 in a bottle 13 in this box so if you move between each model and you're doing them all at a time on a you know production line painting or or something like that then the first one that you paint will probably be dry after you finish the last one so you could probably start that but remember just to be careful make sure that it all is all properly dry before you move on to the next stage uh, this is a nice part 
uh, use a black wash, any black wash really. I'm using Noln Oil from Games Workshop. This is a really nice one. Um, uh, I've got a, the same brush that I used to paint the cloak. It's just an old brush. Um, you, you don't want to use really nice brushes really when you're washing big surfaces like this. It just messes up the uh, the paintbrush. But I'm putting a decent amount of wash onto the brush, but I'm being careful. I'm being careful not to put it on you know, the, the cloth parts or the skin tone. Now be careful with the skin tone because the helmet is quite close to the eyes and the skin. So when you're moving around those areas, put, just put a little bit less on, on the brush. Now you do want to put a nice amount onto the, the metal. Uh, that's because obviously we've not dry brushed over the metallic mouth, so you want each of the links to actually look separate. So you want the black, or, uh, the black wash to go into the recesses to define that. I'm um, going over the, the leather bell and the, the gold. Now, some of you might like to use like a flesh wash, like a reddish tone or or um, like a brown wash over the, the gold. You can do that if you like. I'm not doing that because I don't think it really makes much difference um, on this model because there's only a little bit of gold. But if you like to do that, you can do that as well. You can wait for this uh, wash layer to dry and then wash it or you can do it at the same time so the washes dry together. To see how I'm being careful with the helmet. I tried to put a nice amount on so you get a bit of shading on, but remember that the helmet will probably be nice and shiny because the sun yeah, hits that directly and it's quite a flat, bold surface on the helmet. So don't put too much black on your helmet. But there is a nice bit of deep, like a, a middle ridge of detailing on the helmet. So you do want to see the difference between that and the main cap part. Now after I've done a generic wash around, I tidy up parts of the model that, that are pulling too much where I don't want them to be. Turning it around, having a look to see that it's all nice. There's a bit too much in the helmet there, so I drag it off. Make sure there's none in the skin tone. And set that down to dry. You know, you don't want to be highlighting before it's, this, this level is properly dry. Now you should only start highlighting the armour once the wash is completely dry, like I've said. There's no point in messing up the stage that you've already done just because you think you can save some time. So once it is properly dry, come in with a light silver. Um, this is a foundry metallic colour. This is C. There, There's a triad for the foundry colours, so A, B and C. I use A for the base coat. This is C. The middle tone isn't really worth using. And... I put on a little, little amount onto the, the tip of the brush and I start doing the edges of the parts of the armour which need it. You can, you can see just from the light that I'm using uh, for this video where I want my highlights to be. Now that's, that's the good thing about using true metallic metal colours. You can see in the light where you want the highlights to be. So I do start again on the legs where I, I did the base coat to start off with. Um, again, like I said, that just makes it easier to complete one section before you move on to another. Now you can overcompensate with, with edge highlighting on this. Now, metallic colours have a natural sheen to them, natural highlight to them, so even though I've only done one highlight, it does look like multiple different shades in different lighting. So if you overcompensate with highlights, it does look quite nice. And overcompensating generally means that you can do less, you know, more more stark highlights and in effect less. So with the male there, you see how the wash has properly gone into the recess and I just lightly dry brush over the top of that so you can see the detail. Again, I've not got loads and loads of paint on my brush. Just the tip has the smallest amount on. You see how I, I go backwards and forwards from the miniature to the the uh, paint that I've got out. It's best to paint with less paint on your brush and just do more layers. Uh, so I dropped the figure there. Doesn't really matter that much, but you see how I'm not turning the model there because 
the light won't really hit it well so I'm not going crazy with the highlighting in areas that wouldn't normally have the light there uh, with the breastplate here I, I do the chain mail the edges are quite nice on this chain mail so you can see the star you can see you know kind of edges there they're quite nice so just again just the tip of the brush remember that this needs to be nice and slow like I keep on saying don't try to rush something um, go in slower and it being neater at the end is a lot more rewarding than painting something really quick and regretting you know you know skipping parts of a stage or something like that now, this model didn't actually take me really really long to paint it, the video is about 50 minutes long um, but all in all with the basin and everything like that, it took me probably about an hour and a half. So it's not that bad, really. So getting back to the actual painting part, the chest plate is actually really nice and easy because you can just drag the brush essentially over the detail and it paints itself really. With the, uh, the fingers and stuff like that, I try to do you know dots to represent how the different links of the armor go over lines super super easy see how on the flat surfaces there I kind of paint a prominent line and then drag that line to to kind of feather the color now that 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 creates a nice blend without going too crazy um, so it's a nice thing to practice. You can do that on on all the colors. I, I did that on the cloak, as you can see. But practicing that is a nice way to blend two colors in without actually having to wet blend. You see that quite nicely on his right hand that's holding the sword a bit later on. Her fingers on a sword and everything like that nice and slow with it a little bit of paint makes it a lot easier to get into the the harder angles and now you can see where i'm kind of painting the line and then feathering out this paintlet so paint the line and then just drag 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 do it nice and quickly and you can see how it blends that top part where the light will be hitting the armor to the under part of the forearm where the light actually won't be hitting as well Again, nice straight lines or dots for the fingers. Overcompensating for the highlights on metal is a really, really nice way to get a good effect. With the shoulder pads, there's two different sections. So I slowly go on the first part um, of each one. And then I start by doing the edge of the main shoulder. So do this slowly. You want to keep that black line in between so that you can see some, some form of shading. And see where I'm you know, feathering out the main flat surface here. Not putting too much paint on, just using that paint that's already on just to feather out. And it's, it's essentially like a, a buffing of the armor so you can see how that's a nice effect here i have to turn the model because there's a bit of a weird mold line there but don't worry too much about that um you can just paint over it it's not really that obvious and now i move on to this other shoulder pad now you can actually see i do make a mistake uh, I, I do kind of get it into the black part it's nothing to worry about don't worry about that you can easily correct that by um, putting an extra wash into the recesses I don't worry about it too much. I do correct it later on. I don't show the correction. I just get a bit of black paint and just, just do a nice little line there. But if you can't easily paint straight black lines, just get a bit of wash and drop it into the recess there and, it'll, and you won't even notice that you did it. Again, I'm feathering out to make it nice and like a polished surface. Now that the main part of the, the arm is done, just make sure that you know, there's not missed any parts. And now that's actually done, I can move on to the helmet. Uh, again, try to do the edges of the details. This is this is just an easier way to make sure that you 
you do all the parts that need to be done. Now, this this main, I actually really like the design of this helmet. It's, it's nice and simple and, and actually quite nice to paint. So, do one ridge, feather it out, do the other side of the ridge all the way around. And it's nice and nice and easy. And as I turn it round, you can actually see there's like a middle ridge. So I do kind of highlight that, but it doesn't actually look right. So I just kind of feather it out to make it less prominent. And then I do the edges of the actual helmet, you know, near the eyes, above the brow. Be careful not to get it on the, the brow or the eyes or the skin tone. Go slowly, remember, a little bit of paint makes it a lot easier for you to control. And again, feather out the, the main parts of the the skull, I don't know, the cap part of the helmet, nice and easy, overcompensating on highlights to make it just a lot nicer without going and painting too many colours. So now you can see how that works really, really well. That's just one highlight, a base coat, a wash and one highlight and look how nice that looks. Quite simple, quite quick as well. So now the arm is done, we can do the leather straps coming with just a slightly lighter colour. Because the foundry is a trio paints, um, I just I'm just using the B for this. It's a bit of a dodgy angle because I do put it a bit closer to my face. The detail is quite you know fine, so I put it closer to my face. But I think I realised that I, I had a dodgy angle, so I I tried to sort it out a little bit. But essentially, what I'm doing is I'm painting the top and bottom edges of the lever so that the middle part of it is darker now this isn't what it would normally be like on a realistic surface but for defining detail on a model it works quite nicely in between the belt buckle i just do two little dots i'm trying not to get on the gold i do get a little bit on the gold nothing to worry about because we've not painted the gold yet that's why we do the leather th first and then the gold after so again top and bottom layers of the the leather, trying to leave a nice darker, or you know, the undertone colour in between the middle to represent highlighting and move all the way around nice and slowly. That's the first highlight. I do come in with a se uh, second highlight. You don't have to do this layer. I do it just because that's what I've done on all my other models. Uh, this part is um, essentially like what you do with the skin. So you want to do the same lines that you did, so the top and bottom layers, but you want to want to leave that height, that first highlight color there. Now you can do dots on on certain parts. That's a quite nice effect. I do that on certain parts. Um, but this is a super, super quick um, um, stage of the, the paint. You can see that how it doesn't make a nice little highlight there. Very slight, but does make a lot of difference. But because it only takes you know, not even a minute, it's just a nice little thing to do. Now that that's done, we can do the gold parts. Now this gold will obviously cover up the brown that I got on it. Perfect, that's why we do it second. Um, be careful not to get it on that part you've already painted, so just a little bit on the brush. Nice and simple. Now the guard of the sword does have like a kind of ball design there, so I paint that first and then just do the edges, so the top edge, bottom edge, and leaving the central part of the, the gold, uh, you know, darker, just makes for a nice highlighting effect. Again, make sure you do all of the actual edges, so top, bottom, underneath as well. It's the same on the other side, it's quite simple. Just paint the ball, top layer, and then the bottom part. The actual weight on the back of the sword has like a one line and then like a ball underneath, so I paint the line first and the ball underneath, leaving a, a, like a darker tone in between. 
That's the first highlight. I do come in with a third highlight on this. Uh, second highlight, sorry, of third colour. Um, and I do just paint dots. Now, this is a really, really bright gold. It's quite slight. Um, some people also use silver to highlight gold, but I didn't want to use, I didn't want to do that. So I just come in with this third colour and just paint dots on each of the corners. Um, very subtle. Again, it's the same kind of subtlety as the leather, but it does make a lot of difference when you pick up the model and actually look at it. And now we are coming to the final stages of the model. Uh, the last part's the sword, really. Uh, I have left the handle black, so I do do a quick you know, charcoal y colour, just doing the leather strap part of the handle. Quite simple. I don't even do two highlights, so I just do one highlight. I don't want to do it too prominently, and then leave that. And now we can go on to the blade of the sword. So this is the same colour as the armour. So quick, easy, um, it's the same process as well, I'm just being careful not to touch any of the gold that I've already done, so I just go slowly around, I leave it a nice little black edge there, we're going to be washing this anyway, so there will be a black edge either way, so you might as well leave it and, and be careful, make sure you do the edges properly, you don't want anything to look black on this, again, same thing, be careful around the gold, Make sure the groove of the, the sword is, is properly uh, painted. You want this to be one solid colour, really. Now, I do wash this sword after the, the metal's dry, obviously, but I don't show the process. It's just a boring process. You don't need to see it. You know exactly how to do it because I've shown you on the uh, armour already. So, the next frame is me highlighting after the wash has been done so same highlight color as the armor and i do come in and i just paint the whole blade the bottom part of the blade the whole thing with the highlight color the only part of this that i leave with the you know the wash darker recesses is the middle groove of the sword now I've done this too because it's easier. You can highlight the actual edges of the blade if you want to. Um, you know, like a like alternating highlights. I don't want to do that. It just takes more time. There's no need to do it on these models, or for me anyway. So both of the edges are fully highlighted, leaving the groove. Uh, try to be careful the groove. Um, I do actually end up painting uh, the middle part of the groove. Um, with this highlight colour, you'll see you'll see a bit later on. So do try to be careful. Even I made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes when they're painting. It's nothing to worry about. If you do get annoyed at it, it's best to just put the figure down, stop painting for a minute, and then come back to it after. Don't worry about it. Everyone makes mistakes when they paint, even pros. So here you'll see where I actually make a mistake with painting it in the groove there. You can see it right there. So instantaneously I, I realise it. Not bothering too much. So I, can't, I dry my brush, I wet my brush and dry it. And then I just poke it out. Simple, simple fix. And that's the thing about most mistakes. They're, they're easy fixes. So don't get too bothered by them. And that is the model done. Now here you can see where I've based up the model, um, I've done a nice black rim. Now, black, doing a nice rim around the model, I just think makes it look more professional, really, or just cleaner. So, if you like the way I have done the base, I can show you in another video, but most people have their own basing style. So, as you can see in the light there, um, the cloak looks really fluorescent, and these are all of them done. I think they look really nice in in different lighting they look at they look like different colors and it's not too much effort to do it i hope you all like this video if you did please consider liking it and sharing it with anyone you think might like it if you'd like to see more of this type of video please consider subscribing and don't forget to paint and play